I'm Lauren Cully, and we are back to bake some more Fox in the Snow recipes. And today we're going to make the Fox in the Snow chocolate chip cookie. Fox in the Snow chocolate chip cookie, chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> the Fox in the Snow chocolate chip cookie is a very recent addition to the menu, but it's also now a staple of the menu, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. The thing about this chocolate chip cookie um, is that it really embodies Fox in the Snow recipes in that it is enormous and very, very salty and perfect in every single way. We're gonna get started making it. It's a very classic recipe. Like a lot of the other things that we do here, there's no big surprise. There's no crazy ingredient. It's, it's a chocolate chip cookie recipe. You're gonna have all of these things at home if you've been making chocolate chip cookies, but we do it differently in terms of how we incorporate the ingredients. And then we also do it differently in terms of how we handle the dough and it's, a reverse cookie so we're gonna add the eggs at the end and we're not gonna cream the butter and the sugar and um, it's a confused cookie but it's going places we're going to use cold butter which is usually a very big no-no when you're making cookies but we're gonna add cold butter and we're just gonna beat it until it loses its shape a little bit but we're not creaming this butter and I can't stress enough that um, we're really trying to get this I'll show you the batter but we're really trying to get this almost to the point where it's crumbly before we add in our eggs. And this butter, like I said, it's not frozen. I took it out of the fridge, but I'm not ever gonna use room temperature butter when it comes to this. And this is really just so that the shape of the cookie, it maintains its shape and it gets um, like more like a scone. We're gonna put it in. And then we're gonna, like I said, just beat it to the point where it's going to start to lose its shape. You're just gonna get it. So I'm gonna take it a little bit further than this because I can still see some of the actual cubes. So this is about how far I'm taking it. So it's about like this, it's lost its shape. It's still very moldable uh, and um, it's still cold, I can still feel the cold on it. So then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add the dry. And this is also where it's super different because normally you would be adding your eggs at this point and adding your vanilla. We're not gonna do that either. So we're gonna add our dry and then we're gonna mix it in until it gets to this like crumbly consistency. We had a chocolate chip cookie recipe. We've had a couple cookies at Fox and Snow, but we had a chocolate chip cookie recipe that was on the menu for quite a while um, and it was a great cookie and it had toffee and brown butter and it was beautiful and um, but it was very thin and it was very wide and it wasn't selling as well as some of the other pastries and I had this theory that you couldn't see it when you looked at the pastry display it was really low and you just disappeared so I thought let's make a better cookie and let's make it um, enormous basically <laughs> so that when you come in you have to see it so we are indeed this recipe a while um, until it got to the point where it was really perfect and the real secret to this recipe is the baking time and the baking temperature and so it's really just getting it to the point where it's crunchy on the bottom soft on the top and then gooey in the middle um, but once we figured it out we released it and it sort of had a life of its own. Nothing in the history of Fox and Snow has ever outsold cinnamon rolls, ever. And the cinnamon rolls always sort of been our big MVP. And the first maybe month that we had these cookies out, they outsold the cinnamon roll, which was, I mean, I think we double checked it several times because we couldn't believe it was true, but it was. We couldn't keep them in the pastry case. We had to keep baking them throughout the day. Um, people were buying them in quantities of 48, so they're going to stick around. But they are, they're huge and they're beautiful and they're salty and I love everything about them. We're putting salt inside, then we're going to put salt outside, um, and then I'm going to eat it with a side of salt. I'm not. We really do use a lot of salt. We're using two different kinds of sugar in this recipe also. Um, and we're gonna use a brown sugar and we're also gonna use um, a white sugar. At Fox and Snow, we only use dark brown sugar, which I think is not traditional. Um, I think 
it's actually even sort of hard to find. You can use light brown sugar in this recipe and these cookies will still turn out and they'll still be amazing. But I always found that um, it gives it a deeper flavor and it gives it a lot of the time a prettier color, like if you're making caramels or something. So we are using dark brown sugar. Any sugar will do. All white sugar would also be probably fine. Um, and so we're gonna add our sugars to our butter. All right, so our, all our sugars are going in. And again, we're not gonna over mix, so we're just gonna mix until they're combined. I can't be the only person that always starts it super low. And then I'm like, we can take more, we can take more. <laughs> and I'm always really trying to push this machine to do, to go really far. I'm gonna take it about to there. So as you can see, you can still see the chunks of butter, right? It's not creamed, but when I say combined, this is what I mean. So the butter is definitely still not creamed, but it's combined enough with the sugars that we can push it together. Okay, so then we're gonna add our dry, and the way that we're gonna do our dry um, is we're gonna add it very slowly while the mixer is running, which I know feels like a recipe for disaster because it's gonna, but it'll work. Just go really slowly. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna dump it in here, I'm gonna whisk it. So, these are our dries. No need to sift, but let's make sure they're all happily married. Okay. So I'm gonna add them in slowly, slowly. And what's gonna happen now is it's gonna get super crumbly. And that's good, that's okay. Every step of this recipe, I feel like everybody's gonna be like, I don't know, I don't know, but it, it makes sense in the end, it all comes together. It'll look like a dough when we're done, so it won't be too foreign. And we're just gonna mix it until it looks a little bit like this. So at this point, if I didn't know better, I would panic because I would think this doesn't look anything like a chocolate chip cookie dough, but this is exactly what we want it to be. I don't want any huge chunks of butter, but also I don't want it to be creamed, so this is a good place. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our chips. Also sounds blasphemous because chips are usually the last thing, but we're not. So here's the thing, any chocolate is gonna work because it's chocolate, so you're winning just right there. But we're just using these tiny chips um, like I said, any chip that you use is gonna be great. I have not tried this with a peanut butter chip, but I'm assuming that's Nirvana when it comes to these cookies. Um, so, I also have found that like you don't need, the tendency is let's add so many chocolate chips that that's the primary thing that we're tasting. But the nice thing about this dough is that the, cookie part itself, especially if you're eating these warm and like who's not eating these warm. But um, the thing that you're gonna want is you're gonna want that batter part of it because it's slightly underdone and so it's gonna be better than you've probably ever had it. So add our chips. Does this look like chocolate chip cookies to you? No, it doesn't. It is, but it doesn't look like it. So that's about what it's supposed to look like. All right, so now we're gonna add our eggs and vanilla. I have trouble not cracking two eggs at a time. This is gonna look like I'm trying to show off, and I am. But um, I, when I first started baking, I had to bake, I had to crack so many eggs. And honestly, at Fox and Snow, we use so many eggs, um, especially for those egg sandwiches, that I was cracking hundreds of eggs a day. Um, and if I sat there and gently cracked each individual one, um, we wouldn't make anything else. So started learning how to crack two at a time. If you're not doing anything at your house and you want an exciting um, activity, try to teach yourself how to crack two eggs at a time. 
So I went ahead and I whisked the egg just because what I want to avoid doing, it's the same reason I sifted the flour before I put it in. What I want to avoid doing is relying on the mixer to do most of the mixing for me because then the tendency is it's going to overmix, which is what I don't want to have happen. And then we're going to add the vanilla. And here's my feeling about vanilla. Sometimes I feel like it's not important, like if you're using a cheap vanilla. The other thing is I never measure vanilla because I think it's, you would have to really pour a lot of vanilla in to over measure. So this to me is about how much I would use. <laughs> you're also welcome to measure, but I think it, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Okay. So here's where the magic is sort of going to happen because now when we're done with this, it actually is going to look like a chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, and so we're just going to stream it in until it starts to come together and it'll look really familiar when you're done. So you'll know when you're done. I have always struggled with recipes that tell you to use like a tablespoon or a two tablespoon measuring device to get to measure out your cookies because I don't know who's eating two tablespoons worth of cookies. That said, um, these cookies are so big <laughs> that I, um, I am embarrassed to show this to you, but they're going to be so good. So at the bakery, we weigh these to six ounces, which is, I bet this is about six ounces, but um, that's a lot. So if I can press it in, like if you're at home, I would press it into a half cup measuring cup to make sure that that's about how much you want or that is going to be about how much you want. And then we roll it into balls. So this is a single cookie. This is one cookie that I will eat by myself. <laughs> um, and it's the size of a tennis ball. So um, this is how big they are. Is this a cup for scale? That's massive. You know what else we could use for scale? Um, a puppy. <laughs> um, I do have people write in and ask for the calorie count of something, and my response to that is usually, ooh, <laughs> because um, it's a lot. And if you're eating six ounces of cookie dough, you're a happy person, but probably not counting calories. I will say this, my tendency is to make them bigger as I go along. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but um, I do think it's somewhat important with this recipe to make them all pretty much the same size. So if you have a scale, that's great and you should weigh every single one out um, because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want one to be overbaked and one to be underbaked. And the baking part of this is so pivotal that um, you really do want them to be pretty much the same size. So why do you roll it into a ball? I think that especially with this cookie, because it is more like a scone, you do want it to have that dome. And so I do think that that's important. The other part of it is I think that it's just um, how I have always made cookies is you make a cookie and then you put it on. So is it important? Probably not, but it feels right. And that's a lot of baking. Does it feel right? Yes. Is it six ounces? Yeah, that's okay. Here's the other thing about these cookies and a lot of the stuff that we make. Freezing it before you bake it almost makes it better, but freezing it before you bake it with these guys definitely makes it better. So you are gonna wanna freeze these. A couple reasons that's great. One, it's going to maintain its shape a lot better. So if you throw these in the oven right now, you're gonna get a lot flatter cookie. But if you, um, the other good thing about it is because they're the size of a small car, um, if you wanted to only bake them one at a time or two at a time, you can and just throw them in the oven as needed. The one thing you don't want to do is put the salt on now because the salt will get moisture in the freezer and it'll evaporate and then you put more salt on it and probably be delicious, but you don't need to. So um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wrap these because um, I'm going to, once they're frozen, I'll throw them right into the oven. But if I wasn't going to eat these right now, I would wrap them and make sure there's no air getting to them and then bake them as needed. So, oh my God, here's um, 300 pounds of cookie dough. So this is what they look like when we freeze them at the shop. Um, so rock solid, you can freeze them so that they're all touching. You can make this many and <laughs> this many. This is what my freezer looks like personally. Um, but so this is about what they look like. 
um, and then we'll put the salt on them right before we pop them into the oven. So I'm going to bake about six on this tray just so that you can see. And oh, surprise, what's this? Salt. Um, this is more Malden sea salt. Um, again, put it on everything that I do. Um, and are we going to go with a light hand with salt? No, we're not. Um, you can, but what's the point? So again, we're going heavy handed with the salt. I would say if it looks snow peaked, that's probably the right amount of salt. If it looks like too much, that's probably also the right amount of salt. So the other thing about these is we bake them at, um, on a low fan. So I don't use convection. If you have a convection, I would turn the convection off. But um, these are going to do like a low, slow bake. So a lot of the time when you're making chocolate chip cookies, it's like 12 minutes. Um, these are going to be in for a long time. So um, they're going to be in for like 30 minutes. It's a long time for a cookie. But again, it's, you know, seven cookies in one. So it's probably going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to turn on the oven, pop these guys in, and then everybody gets to eat warm cookies. So these have now cooled to the point where you can pick them up. So this is also how you know that they're done. You're going to get this super golden, crunchy bottom. The outsides have this really nice, crispy top. But then you can even see from where they split. And ours split all the time, so if you're split, no big deal. But you can even see the, look at, here we go, the inside. So it's slightly, it's like almost underdone, which is actually exactly how you should always eat a cookie. So again, crunchy bottom. And then it should have that beautiful, everything's melted. And then it's perfectly, well, and see, then you also know it so well. So it's perfect. It's exactly what you want. I'm going to get the bite with salt on it. You'll never believe, but. perfect. It's just the right amount of dough and crunch. So you get both of those and then all the salt on top, which is my favorite part. And now I have to prevent myself from just eating them all, basically. But this is our version on a classic cookie. Accessible, elevated, perfect, enormous, salty, just for you.